a podcast, folks. You've come to the right place. Today, Dave O'Neill uh, loses his mind in an unprecedented way. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to put that on last because you've got to earn it. Oh, Yeah, it's Wooey the Bat and his new mate... MP Monkeypox sing mm-hmm. a song. Mm-hmm. A duet. Uh, you're gonna, <laughs> for the ages. That, duet for the ages. That's the gold at the end of this podcast rainbow. 100%. You know, Na- Nazim Hussain pops in to talk about everything. Jeez, he's in a good place at the moment. I love that man. Another ra- comedian, Brad Oaks, the legend that is. A, B.O. A random man from England has come oh. to Melbourne to look for a random guy called Ian. We'll explain what that is later. Enjoy the podcast. Yes, and the gift is monkeypox for you at the end. <laughs> Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. The podcast. Good morning, Melbourne. Welcome to your Friday. Oh. It's just you and I in this little Fokker friendship. Fokker friendship. The Fokker friendship. One of the great aircraft names of all time. And a great aircraft. The Fokker. 100%. The Fokker 500. There wouldn't be any room for bags or any other human beings in the Fokker <laughs> friendship with you yeah, and I in there. There would not. Can I tell you, I sound like I've got my shit together, yeah. but I'm very discombobulated because I woke up this morning and you know... it you've got a routine, and if you're listening, you know because you're up earlier than the average person. Yeah. You've got a routine, and if one little thing... Chaos. Yeah. One little thing goes wrong, you're completely thrown. And angry about it. And, like, I felt like I was in the twilight zone. My uh, uh, tyre was flat in my car. Really? Yeah, so I reversed out of my driveway, just autopilot. It just (laughs) reminds you how autopilot you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I heard that flapping sound and I thought, that's weird. And then I got out in the dark street and looked at the <laughs> at the tyre and I just thought, can I possibly just soldier on with this because I don't know what to do now. <laughs> just drive with a dead flat tyre. So I reversed up, put it back in the uh, in the in the, the garage. Yeah. And then I've got we've got another family car that we all go in if we go anywhere. Yeah. And so I'm driving that, but it feels like I've stolen someone's car. I don't know where <laughs> the buttons are. Uh. It's a, it's the Kia Carnival, <laughs> and I haven't driven it for years. Anyway, I'm all discombobulated. Mate. I've managed to get a coffee. I'm going to get that in my guts and uh, and, and what could go wrong. Sonny, I know exactly what you mean. When Maccas, for some reason. Yes. The Victoria Street Maccas, one of the biggest Maccas in Victoria. 100%. Sometimes they just don't do drive through Why? And they just say some shit like, oh, we're updating the system. You're not updating anything. Do you, st- do, is there a sign before you get in no, there? No. You get all the way to the luminous oh. screen. And then you're like, well, what am I going to do now? And then they go, but you're welcome to come in. I'm, I'm welcome, am I? I'm welcome. No, Blake. This See is, you later. This is not part of my journey. I'll have your badge, Blake. <laughs> Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. How good is exploring our amazing backyard again? And ticking off all Aussie big things. Pineapples, bananas, melons. That's making me hungry. Head to whatif.com and start planning your big Aussie adventure. What if it's Aussie for travel? Tucking tennis. Big Rodge. Roger Federer is retired, Swanee. The Federer, the Fed. He started in nine. Call in there. The Fed, of course. Okay. FedEx, Fed FedEx, Dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ninety-eight. He was pro. I was thirteen years old. You always compare it to your own life timeline when someone like this goes. Yeah. You just feel old and a bit sad for no reason. Yeah, like, well, that's 25 years, isn't we're, it? We're going to be fine. We're going to move on from this. Yeah. But there's a low hum of sadness when someone like this retires. Yeah. I don't think the low hum of sadness is coming from the FedEx camp, though. I think he's just asleep on a giant bed of cash. Man. And he's excited about what the future holds. He got, like, over 500 mil in just tournament money. But then big brands came for him, like luxury watches and Mercedes. He wasn't doing no, like, uh, uh, dodgy little endorsements. The big ones went for him. Moe, Moet, whatever it's called. I feel like Rolex. Rolex went for him. I feel like that was it. Or Longines. Here's a little bit of his speech. To my tennis family and beyond, I want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart to everyone around the world who has helped make the dreams of a young Swiss ball kid come true. Mm. To the game of tennis... I love you and will never leave you. Oh, well, that's good. That's not a threat. Yeah, he's going to be one of those old coaches that you see in players' boxes. You know, like... Yes. Yeah, Boris Becker pops up every once in a while. Is he still very young? 
Uh, he's Ash. Is he forty yet? Is Rog forty? Yeah, he's forty-one. Wow! How wonderful! What, what a, a psycho! And you know what? He might be one of the ever diminishing um, sports stars who are actually a good and dignified person. That's the thing. He's been squeaky clean since ninety-eight. There's. Can you guys remember one dodgy thing he's done? No, no. And I love his relationship with Nadal as well. Have you seen their interviews together? They're just the cutest little odd couple, sweet like Heckle and Jekyll. Yeah. And Notice that Djokovic isn't in that little threesome because no. he feels like a bit of a, a straighty 180 nerd burger. I think they all are a little bit straighty 180 nerd burger. But not in a... Like for some reason, Joker is in an annoying way. I don't understand. Maybe, maybe Djokovic is like the me in that group. Nah. You know, like you guys are all sort of good people but yeah. also a bit loose. I'm not loose. <laughs> f- I'm the dag. A few fed facts. Guess what his favourite band is? <laughs> Now, that's not nerd burger behaviour. No. Also, yes. he's got two sets of twins. Did you know that? I did know that, but I'd forgotten that I'd buried it. Two girls, two boys, twins, and his sister's got twins as well. What's all that about? Well, must be genetic. I'm going to miss you, Roger Federer, you beautiful Swiss master. But remember his words. Yeah. He will never leave you. <sighs> This is the Chrissy Salmon Brownie Podcast. Friday, we did it. A lot going on. Today is the day someone wins first class in 50K. We've been talking about that since I was in high school. It yes, like. it does. Uh, so get on the radio or go to the Nova player and you could be winning it this afternoon. The whole team uh, are back from uh, Warrnambool or the Surf Coast, I believe it's called. Uh, where we farewell Jonathan Brown's beautiful mother, Mary Mugovan Brown, yesterday in a in a beautiful ceremony. And we all had a lot of free time because uh, we, we went down. It's a long way. Yeah. And uh, and we, I think we were, we were keeping it, like, peaceful and thoughtful, weren't we? we I went for some walks and you went for some walks. Yep. And it was a, you know, sad and, re- and reflective time. Yeah. Um, but I found myself uh, at the bank. In Coroit Street, in uh, the main the main drag of the bull of, of Warnable, because I drove down on my own. Mm-hmm. Um, I I love a road trip on my own. How good! Um, and I saw all the way down little stalls, my favourite, hey. uh, because that's Irish potato farming country. Oh, really? Yeah. So a lot of uh, a lot of those farmers. Uh, multi generational Irish. Tetris. It's super, super, super Irish. Did yeah. not know. That. Yeah, um, and there's still, you know, there's Irish festivals and lots of potatoes. And I thought I'm going to get me some of those potatoes, Urgh. but I had no cash. Oh, I have not held cash for years. And these old these old farmer types don't have little tap machines. Certainly not. <laughs> oh, wow. Certainly not. So I on the way down I thought on the way back I'm going to have to stop at these places and buy some of this farm produce because you know I'm mad for that stuff. But I thought first steps, first things first is I've got to get some cash. And so I went to the main drag Westpac. And uh there was an ATM at the front and two a, a couple were there fiddling around with the numbers. They would have had an average age, a median age of about 140, <laughs> the two of them. And they looked at me like a young whippersnapper and they said, can you help us with this? And I said, I think, I think I've got less of an idea than you. I haven't been to an ATM <laughs> in years, maybe five years before the pandemic, yeah. you know, because yeah. you tap and go. Anyway, of course, I, and I said, look, if this works, I'll be able to help you. Of course it didn't work. Mm. It didn't work. I didn't know the PIN number. It said the account was wrong. I didn't know what account I was using. I was using a credit card, not an ATM card. <laughs> Had no idea. Yeah. I've never felt so adrift. Yeah, and you were supposed to be helping in this situation. Yes. Anyway, I said, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm no help to you. So they went into the bank and then I went in soon after them. And there was a gorgeous woman behind the counter who looked like she'd been working there since she was a young, a wee gal, a wee mm-hmm. bairn. And I said to her, this is very embarrassing. I've got this card and I have an account with you with money in it, (laughs) but I don't know how to access this money. And I You went to withdraw money over a desk. Yes. And not a large amount of money. No, I wanted $50 in in fives and tens. I said I need small denominations because I want to buy potatoes. (laughs) (laughs) And you know what? She looked at me with the sort of look that, is that this has this is not the first time this has happened. Right, right. So she said to me, Do you know what 
so I handed her over my card. No, I had to. No, I had to put the card in, and it wouldn't work. And then she's like, "It's asking you to swipe," and then I had to swipe. I just felt so adrift, like completely. I had no idea what I was doing in there. Swipe the card. She goes, is it your everyday saver account? I said, I don't know. Don't ask me these things, lady. And then she told me the balance and I went, yeah. Were you happy or sad about the balance? Well, it seemed a little low, (laughs) to be honest, but I was like, oh, yeah, I think I've got got one of them in and I've got several accounts. Yeah. Anyway... She had, you know, she, it was so nice to see she did that flicking thing yes. that the bank women do. Yes. Even with just $50 in, in notes. Anyway, I put it in and I put it in a little sort of envelopey thing that I had. And then I kept on checking it for the rest of the morning in the bag. I'm like, have I got my cash? Yes, I do have Where's my, my potato money? Where's my potato money? Anyway, you'll be pleased to know I did pull over and, uh, and I bought some Swiss shard. And some eggs. You got some shards. I got some shards, and uh, and I got uh, a lot of potatoes. So yeah, I'm asking you. Yes. Would you like? I'm going to make a curry out of the potatoes and the rainbow chard this weekend. What does rainbow chard mean? It's like a silver beet, but lots of colours. Jesus. And I'm going to make a curry out of it. Yeah. And I wanted to know, do you want some? Look at my eyes. Your eyes say yes. Yes. Yes, bitch. Yes. <laughs> Bring me that curry. Fry me up them taters. Correct. Bitch. Uh, Swanee, back in a second. Ever wondered what happens in the studio? Check out Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Instagram. Uh, it's myself and Swanee this morning. Uh, we're back to normal on Monday. Everyone's back. Yes. But, hey, I really understand getting on the road for footy, Swan. I actually drove from Perth to Melbourne in 06 for the grand you final. You did not. Yeah, I, couldn't, I couldn't afford a plane ticket, so How I drove long does that take? two days straight. It was crazy. But wow. Then the Eagles won by a point. It was insane. So you don't regret a second of no. it? No. How many Big Macs were consumed on that road trip, do you reckon? Probably north of seven. North of seven? North of seven. Lauren from Knoxfield, you're on the road? Oh, my goodness, yeah. So on our way. <laughs> I love it. Who's in the vehicle with you? So I've got my hubby, who is the Collingwood supporter. Um, and then we have our three kids. You understand it's not the grand final. Oh, I understand. <laughs> Not quite sure he does, but okay. at, what, at, up. at what point are you stopping at Macca's for the uh, in transit Big Mac? Yeah, so I've packed a few lunch boxes so that hopefully that gets us to at least like morning tea time. Yep. And um, yeah, we've got a six-year-old, a three-year-old, and a four-month-old Happy in meals. the car. Happy so, meals. Have the kids turned feral yet? Not yet, but you know. <laughs> We've got a long trip ahead. Hey, Lauren, did you find it hard to find uh, accommodation in Sydney? Um, it was a bit tricky, but we ended up, um, yeah, finding something in Darling Harbour. So we we're there for a few nights, and then we will drive back Gosh. early next week. Hopefully you're really, happy. <laughs> you're really putting in the hard yards there. Was it easy to get tickets, though? Um, Jono is a member, so, yeah, he... Right. Did everything you needed to 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 get his ticket, but um, I yes, I'll be watching the kids, and he'll be heading off to the game. Lauren, if the pies get up, you guys have officially had the greatest season ever in terms of excitement, in terms of just crazy finishes. I'm very very jealous to you and all Collingwood fans. Yeah, been very lucky. We actually think maybe our son is a bit of a good luck charm because since he's been born, they've pretty much been on a winning streak, so... Ah. <laughs> Brody, one of our producers, arrogantly says Collingwood have no chance, and he's not even opening the door for the possibility of even a close no, game. this is what it's... happens when you listen oh, to too much, SPN. <laughs> it rots your brain. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hey, Loz, <laughs> you could win first class in 50k. Enjoy the road trip. Uh, we've got another again. Loz. Yeah, Loz. Loz's. Hi, Loz. Hi, how are you going? Good. Are you excited? Good. Totally. I'm in the car all on my own with my scarf and my hat. And I've had two hash browns and I've got a Big Mac coffee. Yes, Loz! <laughs> now, hey, Loz, when you get to Sydney, are you going to get on it tonight? Because you don't want to be hung for the game no. tomorrow. Oh, look, I'm staying with friends and they're, they're going out dancing, so I'm going to go out dancing with them. So who knows what it'll be like in the morning. Oh. <laughs> And the road trip, you, you're doing this because of the prices, right? The the insane... Uh, the, the prices are outrageous. So I decided to, and I'm, then I'm heading down to Canberra afterwards to either cry in the lap of some lovely friends um, and then driving home. Uh, are you single, Loz? Are you single? Yes. 
I reckon you're going to get some action in Sydney. Really? My yeah. God, this has suddenly turned into the horoscope. It's going to be the greatest trip, <laughs> trip of your life. You hear me, Loz? Yeah, I probably will sit next to my next wife. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you could win. First class and 50k. Good luck on the road trip and good luck to Collingwood. I don't like the pies, but you've got to admit, every time they're up, this city is something else. I couldn't agree more. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. The podcast. Morning, Melbourne. Welcome to your Friday. If you're anything like us, it's certainly been a week. Oh. Uh, so to celebrate, we've got... Crazy old Uncle Dave oh, here. Whoa. One of my favourite human beings. Here I am. I was in the happy. street yesterday and an old lady said, how's our team going to do on the weekend? I said, what team? She goes, Collingwood. And she what? thought I was a Collingwood supporter. What an idiot. I was robbing a 7-Eleven at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Bang. Stay down, Melbourne. Uh, stay down. Now you guys have been in Warrnambool. Yeah, we yes, went. Yes, we have. We were lucky enough. I feel pretty lucky to be there yesterday to Absolutely. celebrate the life of Mary Muggam and Brown in an old country church. The sun was shining. Obviously, Jonathan Brown's dear Mom. mother. The mm. sun was out, as, a, as I said. Uh, the, the church was overflowing. And, like, as happens with a lot with funerals, some laughs and some smiles. Like, yes. there was some beautiful stuff learning about uh, mm. the wonderful life Mary had. Mm. Pangy on the front bar last night did a lovely cheers as well. I just wanted to say to my, my, my dear uh, friend and a great uh, mate of this show, Jonathan Brown, uh, today um, I laid to rest his beautiful mother Mary down there in Caroit. so our uh, thoughts are with Brian and the family. Mary is a wonderful uh, wife and mother and uh, grandmother and um, so uh, just our thoughts are with the whole family, but Brian especially and uh, just True. gone way too soon. So uh, <laughs> Lovely, and um, yeah, it was so nice. good to see John. It's yeah. been so long to give I him. No, we haven't seen him for a couple of weeks, really. Give him a big hug, and mm. yeah, the, mm. the community there was it was quite amazing. Oh, the country communities, yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is the Chrissy Sam and Brownie podcast. It's Chrissy Sam and Brownie on Over One Hundred. Dave O'Neill in because it's Friday, and I'm told mm. that Wuhan the Bat, one of your most yeah. beloved characters, yes. I heard that he may be doing a duet with Monkey Pox. What the monkey? The monkey. The, oh God! What They're a gift here. for you! I haven't put. I never put two and two together. Melbourne, this hour, <laughs> a duet. But in the meantime, famous people. I want to like you once. I have famous people. I I got heaps of celebrities in my phone book. Yeah, I, I met the bass player from Pseudo Echo once. Ha! Yeah, I'll get them on. Yeah, yeah. Now it's time for Dave's face. Yes, and one of my absolute favourites is the man I go on the road with a lot, comedian Brad Oaks is here, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, Brad Oaks. Oh, Doing a right. show called Pivot in the Fringe Festival at the Speakeasy Theatre. That's Melbourne Fringe, that's right, 6th of October. Listen start. to that man's voice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's done a few few miles. It sounds yes, like, it has. It sounds like gravel took a shot of whiskey. <laughs> and if you are, you know, it's, this is, I mean, people say this all the time on here, but this is early for a comedian. Yes, it yes. is. Yeah. And yeah. luckily I was just sleeping under that bridge just over there. So <laughs> A short walk for me. <laughs> when was your very first foray into stand-up comedy? What year are we talking, Brad? 1989. Yeah. Oh, May, I was 1990. Yeah. May, May 1989. And it was, uh, yeah, it was somebody dared me to do stand-up. And Would you have ever considered back then in 1989 that you would have a 30-year career in stand-up, uh, you know, just... Just like somebody who signed on to work in the Holden factory, you know, like oh, it's been a yeah. right, constant I, work. I, I wasn't thinking about thirty years of anything, mm. you know. Really, it was just uh, at the time I was thinking, because like, I'm quite old now, you know, and for a stand-up, and yeah. I am. Um, I'll tell you how old I am. I am um, getting those old people injuries, you know. Yes. I, I um I twisted my ankle getting out of bed the other day. Oh <laughs> God! I stepped yeah. on one of my testicles. <laughs> 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 I, I didn't get hurt because luckily... They I, do get low, don't they? they? Do. Well, luckily I landed on the other one, so I was all right. <laughs> it broke your fall. It did. I just bounced, bounced back straight to bed. I nearly tripped over a pillow this morning. <laughs> well, that's yeah, bit, that's yeah. pretty much the image. Yeah, 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 it was exactly the same. Brad, what's the wildest thing you've seen whilst being on stage in 30 years? Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. I was on stage in uh, Geraldton in, in WA. Mm. The Wild I, West. Oh, yeah. yeah, and I saw a, uh, I saw the glint of a um, stubby 
arcing through the lights <laughs> towards me on stage. Oh, Jesus. Somebody piffed a stubby at me because, you know, that was their way of saying, I don't really like what you're talking about. And uh, I, I've just, I had to challenge, that was the late, great Dave Grant. Yeah. And I had to, I had to challenge him because you know, I, I saw it coming and I ducked. You know, I'm pretty nimble. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. And it's, uh, and I, I had to, I had to challenge the guy, and he was enormous. Remember, there was a wrestler, Haystacks Kate Calhoun. Yeah, like, he was that big, and he stood up. And I said, "Mate, you threw a stubby at me," and, and he said in the most cultured voice, because he looked like a bumpkin. He goes, "Yes, I have done the wrong thing. I shall remove myself." <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I don't, know. I don't know if I'm always here. This is, <laughs> this is really going on. So, look, I've seen that. I'm, uh, yes, I'm, I have done the wrong thing. I shall remove myself. I shall remove myself. I had a woman at the uh, Le Joke, at, upstairs at Le Joke, who uh, flashed me her um, lower half one night. Lower half? That's an unusual oh, geez, dress. That's, yeah. that's a rare and flashing. I know. And it's the first and only time I've ever stuttered on stage. Like that's bum a, out or front front? front. Yeah, the, the other bum. And, wow. like, did she have pants or a skirt? She had a skirt. She just went bang. Did she have undies on? Sorry, I'll just love the details. I, thank you for yeah, yeah. asking, yes. No, she so did not. She didn't have undies on? No, she did not. In fact, and what do you think she was trying to express by... Good question. Uh, she didn't have a stubby. She <laughs> <laughs> had a stubby to throw. <laughs> <laughs> it had exactly the same effect on me. I just uh, went, uh, 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 uh. Wow. And then she said, I should remove my underpants. No, she said... <laughs> I've done the right thing. She did the right thing. Yes. Now, now you tell us about your show you're doing Pivot. What kind of fringe festival? Is this about COVID, pivoting? Well, it, it, it came out of that, uh, the, you know, we've had to pivot so much. Things, mm. things have changed. Uh, you know, for example, um, it, it's, it's about how much things have changed. Like, for example... Uh, I think the the dating apps took a took a belting, didn't they? Yes. During during COVID, um, yeah, you, know, you know, people had, had to settle for whatever they could get. Yeah. Right in their within their distance, uh-huh. uh, and the, the things have changed. Like I am, um, I went on a date with a girl on Tinder, and you know, people are so dishonest. Are they? Uh, she misrepresented. Yeah, I don't know. And she misrepresented herself. And I called her out on. I said to her, "Look, I have to say, you don't look anything like your photo." She goes, "Yeah, but to be fair, in that photo, I don't look this disappointed." <laughs> but so, what, what the show's about is the, the show's about what I've noticed since, and Dave, you'll have seen this. Yeah. I think since people have come back to stand up comedy, I think their attention span is a lot less. It's true. Yeah. Right? It's true. Um, and I, I think too that young people aren't necessarily getting enrolled in stand up comedy. Like, you know, each year we, we need another intake. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Otherwise, Dave and I have to write new stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, God. God, no. <laughs> and, um, uh, that, you know, and I think that what they expect is they expect it's going to reflect what they see on the internet. And, you know, there's pictures. Yeah. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm kind of bringing a bit of keynote to oh, stand up. Oh, have you got yeah. a, a very small remote that you click through? A, uh, a presentation. It's not, it's not that small, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Brad Oak, speaking of hooking up on the internet, uh, we'd like to play you a piece of audio. It's a jingle that we've been playing a lot lately for a website called Ashley Madison. Uh, okay. Let's just have a listen and we'd just love your thoughts on it. Oh, okay. Okay. Other than my wife, other than my wife, Ashley Madison's right. I'm looking for someone other than my wife. Other than the way, other than Ashley Madison's right. Then everyone gets behind it. I'm looking for someone other than my wife. Everybody. Other than my wife. It's snappy, isn't it? It just makes you want to cheat. I love it. I mean, when the choir kicks in at the end. I just feel like some woman saying to her friend, oh my God, Maureen, there's a whole bunch of them out here. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Where can we see Brad? Brad's at the Speak Easy Theatre in the Fringe Festival. What date do you start? Uh, it's done on the 6th of October. I'm doing 12 shows. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, come to the, come to the early ones because it will sell out or, you know, I will peg out in either the, um, the kebab shop next door or the other place I talked about. Right, yeah, because yeah. it's in a bit of um, the city opposite the aquarium. Yeah. It's yeah. in between a brothel and the kebab shop. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, It's yeah. a great venue, though, Speakers. Yeah, theater. so depending on how you feel afterwards, you can have either. And, uh, That's it. It's uh, it's seven pm too, so you can you can catch my show and then catch another show right on. and be in the city and uh, yeah, I'll be there. It's well, thanks for coming in. In one sentence, can you just describe your friend Dave, your old friend oh, God. Dave? Yeah. 
Well, that is, it's just, um, mm. he's, he's like Dulux weatherboard paint. <laughs> It just endures. He does. <laughs> Want to see what happens in the studio? Check it out on Facebook. Follow Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Okay. Dino's. Ah! Pitch. Ow! Dino's. Oh, pitch. What? Oh. Dino's pitch. Meow, meow, meow. Dino's meow. pitch. Meow. Yeah. Oh, wow. um, all right, gang. I want you to meet someone who I met in 2008, right? Yeah. But he's recently come to the country and has been on The Project. He's been on other radio stations. Who? Oh, get him in. Tom, Tom, oh come God, in, amazing. please, friend. An actual person. Bring him in. There he is. Hi, Tom. Say hello to Tom. Tom. How are you? Hey, I'm good, thank you. How are you? How are you going? Have I said that correctly? Oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah Very yeah. British. Who is Tom? Well, this is Chrissy Tom. Hey, this Chrissy. Hey. How are you, Tom? If you hey. read his shirt, please, Swanee. It says, Ellen. help. Do you know a man called Ian? Explain what the hell you are doing. Uh, well, basically, um, a few years ago, I made friends with a guy called Ian. We were thrown into a house share together in Oxford in the UK. And Ian's an Australian. And eventually, Ian moved back to Australia. Mm. And we, we kept communicating on Facebook until, stupidly, I deleted my Facebook account. Uh. I thought, I need to find a way to get back in touch with Ian here. And I thought, I could create a new Facebook account yes. or I could just fly to Australia and find him <laughs> and ask him for his email address and so that's what I'm doing. Now, you may be thinking what? This is the best thing I've ever heard. You may be thinking, like, you can still search for him and get his last name, like yeah, it's not yeah. hard but Tom has certain rules. Yeah, I just feel like the internet is not cheating but it's making things unnecessarily easy, isn't it? Um, so I've started off, I wore this t-shirt around Melbourne um, just to see if anybody would recognise the name Ian. By the um, way, he was on the way to the footy because I had a, a beer at the, in the city with Tom and he was wearing that blue shirt. He's on the way to the footy and goes, I've just got to go to the toilet to put my more visible colour on, yes. which is a bright-ass yellow shirt Perfect. that you wore in front of 90,000 people at the G. And yeah. still no Ian. Uh, no, no. Well, too many Ians in many respects. But They're, not the right no. one. No. Who knew? Every year in the UK, there's a list of baby names mm. published that's yes. dying out. And Ian is right at the top. We're running out of them. Yes. Um, but in Australia, they're bountiful. Ian. So many Ians. Ian. I yeah. actually what? don't know an Ian. What? Oh, you've got so many of them. I was at Melbourne Zoo the other day, and I read that the UK gave you a snow leopard. I just wonder... Could we get some Ian's in return? Could you send something the other <laughs> way? Well, and Ian's definitely a Melbourne guy? No. <laughs> oh. Oh. So that's what makes it even more challenging. So where does he live? Well, where was he living when you shared a house with him in Oxford? Uh, he's originally from Sydney, mm -hmm. um, but I have it in my mind that he moved to somewhere ending in an un sound. Melbourne. Melbourne. Brisbane, maybe Carumban, an Australian accent. Mel Melton, Forgive me for this. Mm, Darwin. Darwin. <laughs> so, mm. you know, how's your TikTok Carumban. going, by the way? Because this has sort of blown up on the oh, internet. Oh, yeah, it's, it's exploded. I've got something near half a million views on TikTok <laughs> or something like that. How old is Ian? Uh, Ian is in his early 30s. Mm. When did you know him? How many years ago? Uh, we met in 2013. Okay, so 10 years ago, do you yeah. look different? Would he be able to see you and go, oh, there's my ex-housemate? I think so, yeah. I've lost quite a lot of hair in the intervening years. But, but I the think, face is yeah, the same. Everything okay. else is more or less the Are same. Are you worried you're going to find Ian and it's going to be gloriously underwhelming? Mm. Uh, well... I don't know. There is actually quite a bit of pressure on the situation because I've been chucked out of my Airbnb today. What because, happened? Well, the next people need to come in. I only oh. had it booked for a few days. Um, so if I don't find Ian today, I am technically homeless. <laughs> so there is some serious <clears throat> pressure on this now. What did he do for a job? What did he do for a job in Oxford? And he was in motor racing. Oh, motor uh, racing? Yeah, he was an engineer. And oh. as chance would have it, there is a big motor racing event in Melbourne today and people from all over Australia oh, Ian will be there. are coming here. Yeah, if there, if ever there was a chance to find him, <laughs> it's do now. Do you know his surname? I do know his surname. But you're not going to cheat by giving the surname. Well, I could give the surname. Would you like to know the yes, surname? Yes, I would. Studley. Ian Studley. Ooh, sounds like a 
seventies porn star. It really Ian does. Studley. Ian well, Studley. An unusual Studley. name. I also feel like when I do meet him, I need to apologise for giving all his personal information out in the local media. But it's done now, isn't it? Man, it's done. You're on the damn project. It's a national television show. Do you reckon he's married or he is married? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, we know a fair bit about him. Do you know Ian Studley or are you Ian Studley? What if? Can we? Would you mind if we? Put the call out right now. Is this how you want to find him? Or do you want to not get people to call and rock up to this motor show? Well, I am fairly confident that he's going to be there. Um, so I think we should try, I'm, I'm if not possible. Confident. I'm not confident that he's going to be there. So. If possible, it would be nice to maintain the element of surprise. Okay, but then okay. again, he has also been on multiple radio stations and national television, or his picture has anyway. Okay. Uh, yeah, right. so. It's like Crime Stoppers. <laughs> well, I'm just going to let you go to the motor man. show and well, we're going to watch your TikTok mm. to see what happens. I this is insane. You're a crazy person, Tom. You know this. It. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, that's. I mean, that. if we're being honest, that's not guaranteed, but fingers crossed. Yeah, that he's even alive. Alive. He could be dead, man. Yeah. It is possible, but let's let's hope not. Your TikTok? Yeah, let's hope not. Well, you can just... We can... When you go, we can Google Ian no, Studley. I'm going to Google yeah. the shit out of Ian Studley. The deaths are listed on the internet. What a way to find out. <laughs> what What is your TikTok? Because I want people to watch this journey today. Uh, it's at Tom and that. Good luck, Tom sir. Thank you so much. You're Thanks for having me on. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Titus O'Reilly's here now. And Titus, fun fact, Maxi Gorn is jealous of your theme song. Did you know that? I was waiting for you to play it. He says it's the best. It's time it to get classy. Titus O'Reilly. Hot. He talks about football. Oh. Mostly oh. on Twitter. Two-way characters. And on this show. Yeah, Max, uh, Max has put in an official request to have his jazzed up in that way. Oh, he wants a new one. Yeah. Mm. Well, I think that's important. You've got to have a good intro. Mm, you do. Watching yeah. the wrestling taught me that as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. Now, this is a busy <laughs> week for you. Uh, it's very busy. Yeah, very. But you don't do cashies, you nerd burger, because you're worried about... I get about... paid in gold. <laughs> Gold bullion. Gold bullion. <laughs> and uh, it's, been, it's been busy. I've been flying everywhere, doing everything. But, you know, I, I, I'm a bit heartbroken because Melbourne, of course, last they Friday, lost. were well, knocked out in the straight dynasty. sets. The dynasty is not dynasty happening. dynasty is a bit wobbly. Well, I actually personally was very... I, I thought it was wrong that they expected the Melbourne Football Club to play on the day our monarch had passed away. <laughs> yeah, true. Because <laughs> the mood there was sombre, but mainly amongst us Demons fans, because so many of us knew her personally. <laughs> yeah, royalists. <laughs> you know, people just didn't, you know, to expect us to do it. I mean, interest rates are high. There's all these issues going on in our lives, and they yeah. make us play. So we took the second half off in honour of her. Oh, that's so <laughs> nice. Yes, that's fair. So we can hold our heads how, up, you know, high. How flat, how flat were you, honestly? I was very flat, but at the same time, it got pretty heated in the members. What do you mean? Oh, well, well, Melbourne were really... They they basically didn't score after (laughs) half-time. And uh, some very unsavoury language that I haven't normally heard in the members. Like what? Well, this elderly gentleman next to me shouted out loud, this is a jolly disappointing affair. <laughs> God damn it. And a woman near us fainted. And <laughs> This is a jolly disappointing, disappointing affair. Yeah, he said that. He said the J word. He said the J word. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, wow. he's been banned from the MCC. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Which, you know, is great news. And then, of he course... He seen drowning his sorrows at Entrecot. <laughs> yeah, a $700 yeah. bottle of red. So that was, that was pretty sad. But then at the same time, Essendon... Uh, Doing their best to cheer me up yep. by potentially getting back with their ex, their toxic ex. What? Yeah, so the the rumours are that James Heard is the front runner. Yeah. The, oh. This is if you're not an Essendon supporter, this is the greatest news. <laughs> this is <laughs> why? Because it's just so Essendon. Like up. The idea, they've struggled so long for two decades that the Heard era is seen as something to want to rush back to. Like, that's a highlight of the... Like, last time you... So even if you believe everything James says... Yes. Um, it still led to people... <laughs> thank thank in you, the, Thank you. Thank you. It still led to people in the club, about 40 careers being basically ruined and stuffed yeah. up massively. And, and being injected club. with who knows what. Like, even if you believe that they didn't know what it was, which I find surprising, but, like, mm. if we believe it... So you, you say, well, let's get this guy back. Mm. And it's a bit like... After the, what they've just had at Essen where everything has fallen apart at Ooh. the end of the year, do they really need to top up their scandals 
Mm. You know, like do they need? But they, they're going on further. They're they're in the mix. They met with Jordan Degoe from from Collingwood what? to try and yeah to try and get him in. So what? you know because they obviously need like let's have more scan. And you know what they they did, which was my absolute favourite for this. They actually got Jake Stringer in the presentation to talk to Jordan Go- Degoe about coming about, to Essendon. Now, what's Jake Stringer famous for? A lot of uh, very similar controversies to right. Degoe. He was, a, he was a spicy boy originally at the Bulldogs. At the Bulldogs. So when you think about it, this is smart because it's like getting someone to talk to him at his level. Yes. You know, like when you get the wiggles to do safety messages for kids. Right, that does make Similar. sense. That does make sense. I want to be devil's advocate for a minute. Isn't ja- isn't James Heard returning to the Bombers a, a great story of redemption? Mm. Well, do, is the narrative important love? or is common yeah. sense important? Well, the thing is people forget this, right? Heard didn't get sat because of the doping scandal. Oh, didn't he? No, everyone thinks he got sat. He came back after serving his ban, oh. right. mm-hmm. coached, and they didn't win enough. And they sacked him. Sacked. I right. forgot about that. Yeah. People don't remember that. that. So he got sacked for not being a very good coach. Well, maybe he's. That was a long time ago. Maybe he's better. I'm not. I'm not for or against. I'm just saying. Mm. Chrissy, what do you the think? comedy implications. And also, but the bombers <laughs> is like the bombers yeah. is like the worst house on the best street, isn't it? Nobody really wants it. But if you can get in on the ground level, you've got some potential there. Mm. Well, ever it's like the mirage in the desert. Everyone thinks they're going to go there, and it's going to go really well. Mm. Mm. And then it's you know I think they've had like what four coaches since Heard left. Yeah, it's you know it's not it's not where you want to go. I would like to see you coach them, Chrissy. So, mm. would you? I think it would be fantastic. I'll yeah. say things like, "Oh, make sure you're darting hither and thither." <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow! Just the words "hither and thither" on a whiteboard, underlined twice. <laughs> what do I say, boys? No, no, no. Hither, thither. <laughs> If I, <laughs> you know this. What's their slogan? Don, don the sash. Don yeah, the don sash. The sash. Get, get on yeah. the hash. Well, the, oh. one they, the one they had when Heard was in was whatever it takes. That's right. That, that, oh, really that, took that to whatever. Heart, whatever. Yeah. That took a bit right. Do you want to see what this looks like? Well, get the visuals on Instagram. Follow Chrissy, Sam, and Brownie. It's uh, doing something. Aramis. 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 David, Aramis. We, be, we buy it in bulk together to save money <laughs> at Costco. Uh, Titus is here. We actually live right near each other. We do. Really? Uh, and, Two and every, minutes walk. Every time I walk outside. On my house. There he is. I'm wandering around. <laughs> Just aimlessly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, He's joined us on walks before. I T- have. Titus has hung around because we've got more so footy funny. to talk about. Yeah, just me and Dave walking around. But um, if you were waiting for the duet between Wuhan the Bat and Monkey the Monkey Pox. MP, monkey, the monkey, the start of the Monkey Pox is it's here. Go- it's going to be later on now. Oh, okay. It's so, going to be one of the great duets of all time. <laughs> Titus, do you have any messages? <laughs> For people <laughs> on the road right Forget now. Dolly and we Kenny not, Rogers. We may not be on air tomorrow. Yeah, after, that's true. Yeah, after okay. after we'll be I think song. that's it's amazing even you're on now that you're <laughs> signalling it's coming. <laughs> Big weekend of football. Oh, yeah. The, now, the uh, Collingwood, the, the cost of the flights to get to Sydney, to see Sydney Collingwood, are no good. astronomical. I said $1,000 return. It was, I think mm, that that's It got up to 1600 yeah. return right. for one latest I saw. I mean... There's always an easy solution for this: is don't fly commercial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, just yeah. just fly privately. Yes, it's, go to Essendon and get. You a, don't have get to wait in the queues. I don't know why everyone doesn't do it, and it's not as expensive as you'd think. Oh, me and Hughes, you got a private jet on Sunday to go to Griffith. Of course, really? of course you did. Yeah, for this stock agent or well, something. Well, what that do you was mean? nice of you to shout. Easy that. <laughs> they pay the stock agent. We couldn't get flights to Griffith, so they just paid for this flight for me and Hughes to go up in this. What happened to Rextra, Rextra leg room? Uh, Rextra, Rextra. Sunday, hard to get the Rextra. Hard oh, to get really? the Rextra. So how many people were in this plane? It was me and Hughes and one, one couple, and then the pilot, who were a father and daughter team. Really? And he's like, I'm going to go talk to the pilot. I'm going to talk to the pilot. Oh, God. I've got so many questions. I go, mate, do you know what date it is? It's 9 11. You're going to go storming the cockpit yeah. on 9 yeah. 11, mate. <laughs> did, you, did you eat did you... on the plane? Was it luxury? No, the pilot go, had like a box of stuff you could have, like a Kit Kat or a drink. Yeah. Did it have crushed up anti inflammatories in it? <laughs> it was a bit of a party in the sky. Yeah. Oh, it was great. That's anyway. all, yeah, well, that's what I do. I just, because I don't think it's that expensive. I mean, I don't look Ooh. at the price when no, I pay it. Oh, sure, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, if you split it between 10 people, People apparently it's not. That's what that's what I was told. Yeah, but the ten people can't get on the flight anyway. There's hey. every oh, there's all the colleagues supposed are setting off in their 
cars today. Yeah, 132410, by about the way. Private jets. 132410, <laughs> if you're on the road, we want to know when you've scheduled in your uh, Big Mac. Yeah, that'll be. That's the best part of a road trip. You can't tell me Eddie McGuire's not on a private plane. He'll be going up on a private plane. Right? Oh, absolutely. Eddie. Why? He can he'll, afford it. He'll a, be going up in a Zeppelin. <laughs> Like a Bond villain. Eddie, no. Whitt- Whittaker's chocolate zeppelin. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie's one of the few people that can afford their return Business class, to yeah, Sydney. probably, yeah. yeah. But don't you think, so all the Collingwood ones are going up, so you're going to see that long column of black and white flags out of the... Out of all those vehicles, like yes. an ISIS column <laughs> yes. heading up to Sydney. Yeah. You know, I'd be scared if I was in Sydney. Man. This is an invasion. It is an invasion. They barely have had any Melburnians up there. In three years. Yes. And we're, so now we're sending them all to Collingwood supporters. Things are going to change. I wonder what I the stadium's if... going to look like. Oh, it'll be mad. Because those constables are loud. Because I, I went oh, Friday yeah. night to the Melbourne game. Mm. And then the next night I went to the Collingwood game. Mm. And it was the biggest gear shift in crowds. You know, out with the collars and neckties and in with the neck tattoos. You know, yes. that was sort of, it was palpable, the difference. Oh, I went yeah. Collingwood Geelong the week before and they, they boo their own players, Collingwood. So Do they? Oh, they boo, boo in Ginevan, yeah. Really? No, yeah, that must have been the Geelong fans. No, there weren't that many. It was like at least 60 70% Collingwood, for sure. They were booing Ginevan. I'm sure they were. They love him. They mm. usually love him. Oh, okay. They no, love, they it was all Geelong. He looks like Draco Malfoy. He does. Yes, 100%. Yeah, he, Do either underdog have a chance? I'm talking Brisbane well, or Collingwood. Well, the thing is, Geelong are old. So that's the, you know, they're, they're so old they probably spent the week worrying about parking at the G tonight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And Collingwood have this magic in them that hasn't left for most of the season. Yeah, so, they got smashed by Sydney up at the G last time. It was though. only 20 points, wasn't it? Oh, it was a pretty comprehensive. Yeah, so that will be the hard bit. But they look, they could do it. I mean, we could be in for a... A Collingwood Geelong grand final band here. Oh, great. Oh, we're only a week away from the grand final. That'd be great. Make your call now. I know it's early and I know it bears a striking resemblance to tipping. Mm. Oh, you, told, you know, told me never to do this. I just want to know what in your gut are you seeing on grand final day? Oh, I think yeah. it's going to be Geelong Sydney. Okay. Okay. You know, and I think Geelong are going to win it. Yeah. Okay. Come on, go Cats. Yeah. We yeah. love you, Titus. A House Sports Bazaar going. You can get it wherever you listen to your podcast. It's you and Mick banging on about random, insane uh, sports happenings. Yes, just crazy stuff. We're doing the Paris Olympics 1900. Oh, oh fantastic. fantastic. Yeah. Favourite one. Hot air, hot air balloons was an actual event. What? It was how far you could go. And one guy f- took off from Paris and accidentally landed in Russia. <laughs> and he, got a, he and his wife were in the balloon. They got taken into the police station. And the police were like, you don't have a visa. They locked him up, but he, they offered him tea. He goes, I've got French champagne in the balloon. And so <laughs> they went and got the French champagne out of the balloon, the Russians, and sat and drank it with him while they waited for his clearance what? while his wife rolled cigarettes for them. Wow. It was a different era. That doesn't happen it when it crash lands in the yeah. IKEA car park, does it? Yeah. Hey, uh, Google Sports Bazaar, B-A-Z-A-A-R, uh, wherever your podcasts are. We will see you on Wednesday at Grand the, uh, final. the live broadcast Can't in wait. person. Right. Come and meet Titus. See you, brother. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. The podcast. Good morning, Melbourne. You made it. Oh. One week out from the grand final, I personally am very excited. I'm also really excited about our live broadcast at the pub at Crown. 13 10 I'm going to open the lines now. I'm going to What? What? 13 10 If you want to come along and say hello to us, I feel like we haven't seen you in years. Yeah. Please come along. We would absolutely adore to see you. Apparently, it's going to be a, a kissing booth with Sam Pang in there. Correct. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm yeah. organising that. Because he's everyone's whore pass. So yes. there we go. And the price range goes 50 cents for chick, yeah. uh, $1.50 <laughs> for peck on the lips. And if you want to take the French route, French. it's only $10. And $10 is a reasonable price. Competitive. Mm. $2.50 for males. That's yes. $2.50. Yep. Very, hey. very good. Apparently, All money raised goes to a charity. Amanda, Appar- oh, sorry, go. Apparently this hour, Wuhan the Bat and Monkey the Monkey Pox will be doing a duet. When? And I can't see it on my run It's sheet. the last thing we do today, Swanee. Okay. And I can confirm the song. The hey, guys. Whoa, Willie's here. It's Willie. Oh, hey, Hollywood. Oh, dear. I thought we put a bullet in <laughs> Willie's face. I, I thought we had <laughs> as well. What? Though. Amanda from Preston, I'm going to see you at the live broadcast at the Pub at Crown on Wednesday morning. 
Awesome. Can't awesome. wait. Can't wait. Make sure you go to the kissing booth. Let's just go through them quickly. Catherine Intended Head and Indented Head and Carolina from Donvale. Hello, Chrissy. We will see you there, gorgeous. Get the uh, get your iron out, your steamer, get your get your glad rags all done. <laughs> First, Thank you, Chrissy. I'll see you there. First yeah. class and fifty K as well. We've got a lot going on today. I'm gonna do a phone topic next. Yeah. And you're gonna wanna play along with me. Yes. Because if you get on air with your story, doesn't matter how lame it is, mm. you're in the draw. Cool. First class and 50K, that's $50,000 cash and a trip anywhere in the world, first class wow. with three of your mates. That's unbelievable. And leave your damn phone on because Kate, Tim and Joel are calling the winner today. Imagine missing that call. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. This is the Chrissy Salmon Brownie Podcast. So good luck. Yeah, we, we want to know what terrible thing happened on day one of your new job. Oh. Day 1, 13, 20, oh. 4, 10. Tell us a story. You get in the draw for first class and 50K. This, 50K, this is your very last chance. Yeah. So put your thinking caps on. A woman is um, is furious, has been left furious. Furious. How long has it been since you've been furious? I can't even remember. A long time. Oh, I'm so low-key. Yeah, long time. Yeah. This, this woman needs to take a chill pill, by the way. She's a financial management professional. She started a new job, a fancy new job. Mm-hmm. She was quite high up, a boss, a mm-hmm. boss of people. A boss underneath woman. Her. A boss lady. Short skirt and a long, long jacket. jacket. She was touring the facility. She was, and <laughs> giving out... Giving out. It's, it's a song by Cake. cake. What it's are you song. idiots on yeah, about? No, oh, it's a great song. Gotcha, gotcha. Great gotcha, song gotcha. by Cake. Um, now short she's skirt tur- and a long jacket. Thanks, Dave. Yes. Yeah. She's turned up to work in a short skirt and a long jacket, which is a look that I can totally get behind. Um, and arriving soon after her was a giant dolphin. <laughs> a giant soft toy dolphin. It was so Cute. huge that the fuming financial management professionals struggle to fit it in the elevator. <laughs> really? Her husband, an orca or a dolphin? Mm. Her husband had thought that he would bring some levity uh-huh. to her first day and he's organised this dolphin and it was a terrible idea. He got into all sorts of trouble for it, which makes me sad for him because, you know... Yeah, he thought he was doing something good. He thought he was mm. doing something good, but he ruined her first day and straight away on her ruined first day... It. People started giving her weird nicknames. Yeah, Flipper. Flipper, yeah, you know, in in involving the uh, the presence of a giant dolphin. They started calling her a giant blowhole, which yeah. was not. That wasn't right. It wasn't yeah. right. What's Every... happening over there in SeaWorld? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of biscuits in a bucket in the tea room, there was just like pilchards and sardines <laughs> for her. Fun stuff. Fun stuff. Before she Hijinks. made it, before she made a, a, her first talk, she had to jump through a hoop. <laughs> <laughs> that was embarrassing. And then she went crazy and killed her trainer. Yes. It's um, a weird choice of play. A dolphin teddy. A yeah, dolphin. A huge not dolphin. A, not a bear, but a dolphin. Terrible. 13, 20, 14. This was on her first day of work. I think that's why she was You can so misjudge mad. your work. I mean, I, when I started at the Red Cross in the 80s, I was a field officer after I'd been a teacher's college. Mm. I wore a suit. Really? But no one else was wearing a suit. You know, sometimes you just think, oh, I'll wear a suit. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh, you got to lose the suit. Oh, don't wear God. a suit. It's embarrassing. Really? Why? Because it was a I less, love a suit. It was a less formal kind of workplace. Right, yeah, you, know? you were you were like Working the, for a charity. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so when? You suit? You're not working. Working for the National Bank. Exactly. First class and 50K today. 13, 20, 10. What's the worst thing? What's the worst thing that happened on your first day? I want a girl with a oh. short skirt and a long jacket. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Ever wondered what happens in the studio? Check out Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Instagram. What was the worst thing that happened on your first day at work? Well, wow, Tanya, what happened? Um, so I'm a dental assistant and I started a new job and we had a patient and she had extremely wobbly teeth. She refused to take them out. So we've sat down to do a clean and as I've put the suction in, the tooth has gone straight up the suction. Oh, my God, Tanya. <laughs> oh, uh, it was horrifying. <laughs> was that a false tooth or a real tooth? A real tooth. A real tooth. A real tooth. Real tooth. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, you Tanya, got it out. What did you... Oh, yeah. <laughs> what was your reaction when that happened? I'm dying for you. Oh, no, I was just like, oh, my God, I felt sick. And I was just like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. She goes, no, you'll hear about this in court. Oh, <laughs> like, oh, oh my really? God. God. And did yeah. you hear about it in court? 
Uh, there, it did go to like um, the ADA review, and they said no. Sorry, we're not putting this through court. Oh, thank goodness, so, Tanya! Yeah. <laughs> did you have to go into the like the mechanics of the vacuum and pull it out and whack it back in her face? Oh uh, no, you can't because all, everyone else is all over and stuff oh, down there. So it's once in the it's soup. in there, you, it's, that's it. You can't bring it back out. <laughs> it was stuck in a DNA soup. Okay, that's Dave. disgusting. Please <laughs> that's stop right. saying the word soup. DNA Yuck. soup bisque. Ooh. <laughs> oh. Hey, by the way, while we're, while we're talking about vacuum cleaners, you guys want to know something amazing? What? Tonight, smash some glass mm. and then vacuum it up. It feels like ecstasy. It's the best. Uh, mm. Hey, Tanya, you could win first class in 50K today. Oh, that'd be amazing. <laughs> All the best. Can I tell you, my son, Kit, smashed a plate mm. the other day. Zero anger from me because I knew <laughs> that I was getting the vacuum cleaner out and I've got a metal rod on it. Oh. Oh. Tinkle, tinkle. Clank, clank. Georgia, what happened on your first day? Uh, I started a new job. I, um, I'm i from the city and it was a bit rural. And I um, went to use the bathroom to um, yep. do my ablutions. And um, the plumbing obviously isn't as good as rurally. So um, one thing led to another and it was clogged and I was panicking trying to think whether I go ask my brand new boss if they've got a plunger handy. Oh, um, no. <laughs> but oh. I ended up being too embarrassed, so I just used the other end of the um, toilet brush to push it down, and I got away with it. Oh. Georgia, that, there is no bigger fear of mine. I yeah. agree. That's just the worst. Yeah. Because you have to <laughs> disclose it. You have to at some point say, listen. Others have to see your crime. <laughs> Oh, I know, but I, I got away with it and I, I haven't admitted it, but I'm wondering if any of them are listening. And <laughs> I'll have to admit if you are listening and you're putting two and two together, please, we'd like to hear from you, 13, 20, 14. Debbie from Eltham. You're in the draw, by the way, Georgia, and that is an unbelievable story. Uh, Debbie from Eltham, Deb. Yeah. Hi, Chrissy. How are you today? Good, darling. What did you do on your first day? Oh, I got my first ever job out of university working for an organisation helping people with special needs, adults with special needs. And was asked to take them to, for a day trip to the swimming pool, mm. and I got asked to drive a minibus. I'd never, I just got my license. I'd never driven a minibus in my life. So off I went, got into the car park, were asking the people in the minibus, could they help me, you know, reverse the minibus into the car park? Well, obviously that didn't happen properly, and I ended up wedging the minibus <laughs> between two cars, and I could not get them out. Couldn't get it out. Oh no. wow, Deb, did so, you panic? Did you panic and make it oh, worse? Panic. Panic was terrible, and I literally, I ended up reversing out, scraped both cars, oh. and I just got everyone back in the bus, and I just went straight back to work. I just, I, it was just so embarrassing. We didn't even get to the swimming pool. My no friend, trip. my friend, when she's stressed, she gets this creeping rash up mm, her neck. Really? Yeah. Did you did you get that, Deb? Were you rednecked? The bridal rash. The oh, oh, redneck, shaking. I just, I just literally panicked, and then I had to go back into the new boss. I remember standing there, my leg was like, you said, I'm so sorry, my first son, I just crashed your minibus. And he, you should have seen the look on his face. Was he kind to you? Got to be kind. He actually, he actually was kind to me in the end. He was kind. Oh, well, well, learn to drive, you big redneck. Uh, let's go <laughs> speak to <laughs> Christine. Oh, by the way, Debbie, first class in 50K. Good, Good luck, Deb. Right. Christina, what happened on your first day? I started working at an op shop and we were out the back because my job was to sort through the clothes and um, I opened a bag and there was a dead cat that <gasps> someone had put in a <gasps> clothing bin. <laughs> oh, that's what horrific. Sort of person? It was oh. horrible. It was oh. horrible. Why did you put that through, you freaks? <laughs> I know. Someone chucked it out. It was horrible. What, so somebody somewhere... Has their cat has died and they've put it in a bag and then taken it down to one of those bins in the car park and mm. put it in there for mm. someone else to find. Terrible. Yep, it was horrible. Oh, that is a uh, sick person. Let's give this awful story the respect it deserves. Cats. Dan, good morning, Dan. <laughs> hey, guys. Um... So I started a new job as a mobile plan operator and on my first day I ran the dozer out of diesel and got it bogged at the same time <laughs> and and then proceeded to jump in the excavator to 
um, dig the dozer out and got the excavator bomb. <laughs> wow. Damn. It's like a Bob the Builder episode. <laughs> oh. you, need, you need Wendy to come and help you, the wife. So what was the outcome yeah. at the end of the day? What did your bosses do? Um, they fired me. Oh, yeah. man. Oh, so on. did you go home yep. completely deflated with a brand new high-vis uniform and just think, what am I going to do with my life? <laughs> I did, and the worst part was was we spent um, about 10 hours with a tow truck trying to drag the digger out, and oh. all we did was get it even more bogged. It was... That far bogged that I couldn't even close the door in the cabin. Dan, do you reckon if you just came clean before you implicated the second vehicle, you'd still have a job? Just admit it. Well, I had other people trying to help me navigate through getting out, and they were telling me what to do, so it wasn't... I don't just blame myself. Sure. Fair enough. It was yeah. a group effort, and I bet you they didn't lose their goddamn jobs, Dan. <laughs> no. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Here he is, one of our absolute favourites. Nazim. So, no, that's a strong theme song. Oh, so strong. Like I, I, I feel humble. I'm, I'm, I'm flattered. <laughs> I don't know what to say, but it's, uh, it's good rap. Was it you? Uh, no, I think it was Mal. It was Mal. Mal. Oh, yeah, okay. Can I say your um, energy? And I'm not, yeah. you know, a woo woo sort of mm. person. Mm. Your energy's very good at yeah? the moment. It might, mm. it might be because of this. Uh, this T-shirt that I found on Facebook, it Could came be. up as a spot, like a like a, a targeted ad. It's so good. It's yeah, a teddy it's bear in a, teddy in a New a, York a, a baseball cap and a basketball and a chain. But it looked good on the on the photo. How much was it? I, uh, I just remember it saying mad discount. But then the shipping was like eight thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And <laughs> how long did you wait for it? Eight I months. It, when I opened it, I completely forgot that I uh, bought it. Yeah. Um, so it could have been a couple of years. I'm and, still waiting on a slushy cup I bought. <laughs> really? It yeah. might not be coming if you're still nine, waiting. Nine months ago. Wait, wait, wait what's a slushy cup? So it's, um, my daughter loves slushies, as you do. Like a Slurpee? Yeah, like a Slurpee. Okay. And you just put normal drink in there and yeah. then you squeeze it and it comes oh. out frozen, apparently. Interesting. All oh, right. Yeah, makes, but it makes... has yet to appear, so. Mm. Before we talk about your amazing show, is your team still in the finals? Who you go? Demons are out. Oh! oh yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a sad, sad couple of... You know, my son uh, knows that the Demons, like, win... And uh, the last game I took it to was when Collingwood beat us, but we went for the first half and then we left and we were smashing them. So I haven't actually told him that what happened. Yeah. He doesn't need to know. No. He doesn't need to know. You can do these know. sorts of things when they're very little. Yeah, because I wanted to I want to instill in him the, the, the D's. We're, we're a winning team. Mm. We we never lose. And then in a few years, he can start to he understand He can work it day. out. Yeah. Um, now, you uh, you and I live in the same suburb yeah. and I have yet to see you around. No. Really. I've ran into you once at the supermarket. Yep. Do you ever leave the house? I'm always out of the house. Okay. Always at Anderson Park, Anderson up and down Park. at Campbellwood Junction. I'm looking at your Insta stories. You're doing laps of the entire suburb. Mm. Never my, never my street. No, never your street. No. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that this yeah. weekend. It's and bad I'll to disclose you. the street, isn't it? Yeah, don't yeah, yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah. No, I won't do that. Um, you, do you get recognised? I do. In, I've been, in the, yes, in the centre of the universe. I got a discount at a photo shop the other day. Um, I, I, I did actually. Uh, you know, it's weird when you get a discount for being known. Like, you, mm. or, yeah. you know, you'd think that. The famous person should have more money, but I'm a struggling artist, you know. <laughs> anyway, I got recognised. <laughs> yeah, I got recognised at Melbourne Central. I was with my wife and kids. We were at um, in the parents, the parents' room. You know, oh the, yes. the, the retreat, which is not much of a retreat. It's just a freaking heaps of kids in there, and it everything smells, like, smells other, like crap. Smells like other yeah. people's other nappies. babies. The nappy poo. bin was overflowing. Yuck! Oh, the whole thing was just gross. God, never anyway, again. Not Thank much. God, it's over. No retreat. I wanted a retreat <laughs> in the retreat while I. While my while our baby was getting fed, so I, was, I thought I'd use a bathroom. And you know, it's one of those bathrooms where you got to press a button and oh, then the yes. door automatic oh, grabs. So it. tricky. A Star, a Star Wars toilet. The Star yeah. Wars toilets, yeah. Yeah. And I had the green light, so I went up to it, pressed it, opened. Guy on the toilet. Yes. <laughs> and he was like, Ah, Nazim. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and and he can't reach the button from the no, seat. No, you can't. And so I kept, I kept pressing the button. But the more I kept pressing the button, the more it stayed open. Like you, you, it only presses to stay open. Yes. So I was like, I don't know. What, sorry. <laughs> so I just walked off and had to wait five seconds for it to slowly close. <laughs> Meanwhile, kids are running past, looking yeah. at him, going, Mom, look, there's a." Can I tell you? Whenever I go to a toilet and there's that 
scenario, yeah. I find a different toilet because I know that oh. that's going to be the outcome for me. But, no, it's, it's, I don't even trust the red light. I no, agree. But, and also they give you a countdown, so you can only be in there for five minutes. Oh, yes. Yeah, and then it starts counting you down. Well, mm. that's that's a reasonable amount yeah, of time. Yeah, five minutes you is know fine. What, in other countries, they actually charge people to use the toilet. Which spend a penny. That's where they spend a, a penny. And they a used to limit. do that at the Camberwell Market, the Sunday Market. Really? There, yeah, yeah. And my science teacher's mum used to be the lady on the toilet. And you'd go, oh. uh, not on the toilet, on the on the reception. <laughs> oh, right. yeah. There was like a public toilet. Yeah. In the yeah. middle. It's gone now. And you would go and sometimes, you know, you pay five cents or mm. ten yeah. cents mm. to this very angry woman. Oh my God. And did she ever enforce the time limit? No. 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 So yeah. if you went over, she'd just... She'd be like, oh, come on. No, no, she never got up from... I don't know whether she could walk. <laughs> it was often... Uh, yeah, she like in Italy, though. You, desk. you go to a toilet in Italy and there's a, like a... I remember the first time I went there in the 80s, there was an mm. old lady. It freaked me out. Like, what's this old... She's mm. putting her hand out as you walk into the toilet. Well, it's like the guys that sit in the toilet and then offer you, uh, you know, in some mm. fancy restaurants and hotels. Oh, they offer you... Yeah. I don't know what you'd put down as your occupation when you're, when you're leaving the country, you know, like on the... the to- toilet place. attendee. Toilet attendant. Toilet yeah. There is no mm. more vulnerable human being than the person stuck on the loo, ankles, pants around ankles. <laughs> yeah, and far away from the door. Yeah. Oh. If I can't kick it closed, no. then I do not go into that toilet. I feel I like I should, have, I should have plugged anything that I had on because it was just it was a captive audience. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? Hey, buy my kids' book. Oh, I've got a show's coming up. Catch you later. Speaking of your kids', kids book, book oh, yeah, let's yeah. give that a plug. We've only got a photocopy. Oh, here it is. Here. Here, I've got I've got a shiny, hilarious hyena. Hilarious hyena. I've actually sent it to your homes, guys. I haven't um, got mine yet. Well, blame the publisher, but uh, it's on the <laughs> way. I wrote personalised notes. Oh wow! Oh, my kids um, will love that. Not to Dave O'Neill, but um, I didn't know you were. I didn't no, know you were. Right. I'll send, oh, this is yours. Here you go. Um, it's a, it's a kids. It's a hundred. I love that. Yeah? I love it. It's a hundred and ninety-two pages. pages. That mostly, sounds like mostly pictures. That sounds Great. like the sort of man that mm. uh, knows his way around the word count function <laughs> on a word document. How many times did you check it's it? It's about one hundred ninety-two words as well. <laughs> <laughs> What's it? About? So it's about, it's about a hyena. It's, it's about a, hy- a, a, a hilarious hyena who does pranks, takes his jokes way too far. He's basically the hyena version of me. Yeah, um, right. So the hyena loves horseplay. He loves horseplay. Actually, if you think of it this way, and I, and this is probably legally quite a dubious explanation, mm. but if you the Lion King, right? Who are the yeah. baddies in the Lion King? The, the hyenas. The hyenas. Yeah. Why are they the baddies? Just because they want to eat? It's good yeah? point. They're like, we, we're hungry. And the lion's like, you shut up and stay hungry forever. Mm. And, you know, they're just a marginalised community, aren't they? Someone yeah. finally it's, said it. It's just a ghetto of poor, hungry animals. Anyway, this, this book also, is, is kind of set idiots. in that. They're also idiots. They're idiots. Laugh at exactly. See, see how mainstream movies just <laughs> demonise... Poor just, old hyenas. They're just innocent, hungry hyenas. Anyway, so this is basically a story about a hyena named Harry who lives in this big kind of enclave of hyenas and they're mm. all broke as. He wants to live like a lion. Uh, it's a big ethnic community. Uh, I love it. I love Can't it. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read, read it. You know, it's 192 it. pages. Um, uh, let's plug your show, Summer yeah. Love. Summer Love. Uh, it was, it's on ABC. the ABC. Check it out on iView. Um, it was on last Wednesday, wasn't it? It was, it was episode. Like two nights ago. Mm. And uh, But all the episodes are on iView. It was, uh, it was me doing a bit of straight acting. Yes. And it's by uh, Wayne Hope and Robin Butler, the people who did Up and Middle Bogan. They're oh. genius. Mm. They're yeah, the best. Right. They're uh, how did you go with the straight acting? Well, uh, with the straight acting was well, because Wayne Hope and Rob Butler were directing, I, I felt comfortable and in the yeah. zone. And I really felt like an actor. Yes. And, um, all the emotions, and they said, really, lean into that feeling right now, really. Mm. And they'd come mm. up to me and, you know, hold me really close. And You're talk. a thespian, brother. But then afterwards, now the show went to air, I actually, I was like, oh my God, now people are going to see that. And uh, I, was, I was squirming the entire time. Mm. Summer love, mm. I view, get it. Mm. Um, also, let's give you, uh, give a plug for oh, your yes. uh, gig tonight. Yes. Oh, it's sold out. But, um, oh, but, sorry. Hey. <laughs> But thank you very much, though. Appreciate that. Now, what's going to happen here is you can leave at any point no, if you want. It's sold out. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a very, it's, it was still ten dollars tickets. It was a warm up show. Trial somebody. show. Yeah. So pretty much all my tight ass followers was just like, finally, we could see this <laughs> idiot for what he's ten worth. Bucks. Despite yeah. all advice, Dave has kept this character called Wooey the Bat. Hey guys, <laughs> I'm is. back. There he is. Yeah. Hey Hollywood. So just to hey, give you Wooey give you the, the bat. bat story, we'll hand the hey. bat. 
um, became during a, the pandemic. So what? During the pandemic, uh-huh. mm. uh, on all of his There's Zoom ma- gigs, mascot. Yeah, yeah. I started the pandemic. There's some questions about whether or not that was <laughs> racist <laughs> or <laughs> it just was not right. Well, I do know that Dave was probably the most in demand uh, corporate yeah. online comedian. That's the, right. At the time. The I corona. made him. I made him. The Corona comedian. <laughs> You're a Corona comedian. Mm. It's hard to and, compete. Anyway, so we should ask Willie what he's been doing. Yeah, Willie, what have you been doing? <laughs> uh, I'm doing a new TV show. It's Big Brother. It's the House of Shame. It's me, Wayne Carey, George Columbaris, <laughs> Bell Gibson, and the monkey from Monkey Pox. We're in a house together. Okay. Wow. You know how that must be fun. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> what is happening? Well, every night George gets out Bell's cookbook and we try and solve cancer <laughs> with a pasta. It's amazing. Have, whoa, <laughs> sorry, and, 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 hey, know. would you guys like to meet MP? That's Monkey Pox. He, yes, doesn't, he doesn't like the whole, the name's triggering for him because okay. his name's in the actual disease. <laughs> sure. <laughs> his name's in the actual disease. Yeah, Monkey Pox. Sure. No one for, well, hey, Monkey, come and say hello. Hey, g'day everyone. I'm Monkey Pox. <laughs> I'm MP. Uh, Naz. Jackie. Naz. Are you seeing this? Uh, g'day, g'day, Hollywood. My name's Monkey. It's been a couple of rough months, Naz. You're from the. Ju- yeah, I've seen you in the jungle. Yeah, I'm from the jungle. Oh, as the in TV the, show. It's referring to the, yeah. the television yeah. show, oh, no. not yeah. Sri Lanka. Yeah. No, that's. <laughs> you know what? Monkeys have had a rough trot. <laughs> we used to be lovable. You know what I mean. <laughs> the worst we could do, Naz, would go to Bali and yeah. you go to Bali and I'd bite some bogan in the face. But these days, <laughs> <laughs> I'm killing people. <laughs> yes. As we've been in the house with George Cullen Barrett. Yeah, we've been working in his kitchen. He hasn't paid us yet. <laughs> anyway, now these guys. I, I, um, I just <laughs> don't really questions? know what's going on at the moment. But no, yeah. no, no, no one does. No one does. does. <laughs> no one does. A monkey. Just let him go. In the back. Um, it's good that these two guys got together because they're both oh, yeah. animals that have been mm. sidelined yeah, by yeah. pandemics. Yeah. yeah. And. And we're putting out a single today, <laughs> no exclusive. Oh, no way. You guys have come yeah, up yeah. with a song. Yeah. Well, what's it called? It's called Viruses in the Bloodstream. <laughs> okay. That is what we are. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. oh, I'm the vi- oh, so Viruses the, in the Bloodstream. the tune of Islands yeah. in the Stream. Do you want to, oh, should we hear it? It's a fresh oh, God. Hit, hit it, Dino. <laughs> uh, sounded good already. Uh, when do we start singing? Oh, yeah, I love this song. It's great. <laughs> we're we're going to do a duo. Here we go. Monkey, when I met you, i never Species love is fine, but it requires uh, motivation. I can't smell anything. I've lost all sensation. We'll die together. Aha! Uh-huh. Oh, that's the fav- my favourite Swedish band. What are they called again? <laughs> How are they called? Aha! Uh-huh. <laughs> Viruses in the bloodstream. That is what we are. Do you know you just have a bomb. We'll sail away oh, from what? here. That's all we've got up to so far. Wow. That Whoa. Amazing. That, that was incredible. Something. That was something. Catchy. That was something different. Virus is in the bloodstream. Hey, you're not going to get that at any other radio No, you're stage. not. No, you're not. Dave, can yeah. I ask you that? Yeah. yeah I'm obviously you're the man behind the genius, behind sure. this, this musical number. Yeah. Did you have a virus in your bloodstream when you wrote that? <laughs> Probably. And also, I feel I like it. I really don't want to fact check something so clearly genius. What's yeah. that? But Ahara from Norway. Oh, they're from Norway. That's a huge flaw. <laughs> That's a huge flaw. Uh, Mikey, you meant to Google that. <laughs> nah, George was in charge. <laughs> don't play George. We, we must go. Dave, we got to go. Thank oh, you man. so much, as always. Brownie, unless it's a weekend. Barely the 100.